So what is Golden? Well, Golden is a global panel of experts in online education. They specialize in a number of different areas of expertise, including instructional design, online pedagogy, DEI, or what is known as diversity, equity, and inclusiveness, uh, the importance of accessibility, teaching with technology, among other areas of expertise. So we've gathered a global collection of experts in online teaching and learning in many disciplines with all of these areas of strength. Our mission is to support online educators everywhere with online learning knowledge and skills and creating a community of practice containing online learning experts. There are many geography education experts who have taught in the online format and who are part of Golden as members. So we're excited to have so many geography education practitioners uh, that are involved in the process. Our vision ultimately is to establish a community of practice on a global basis using scholarship and other means to be able to raise our global awareness of the importance of online learning in the future of geography education. We currently have 460 global experts that are part of Golden from 44 different countries. We are gaining new members each and every day. And by the end of the calendar year, we will undoubtedly surpass 500 global members. Uh, as I mentioned previously, different areas of expertise, we call these subgroups or directorates. And they include areas in, of expertise of online pedagogy, instructional design, uh, what we're referring to as alternative audiences or diverse learners. Learners such as adults, special education, uh, English as a second language, uh, young learners in the very uh, young grades. DEI, as I mentioned previously, diversity, equity, and inclusiveness. A new directorate on entrepreneurial leadership. Those educators who are involved in being entrepreneurs in education. We're focused in on areas of culturally responsive teaching and learning and helping our colleagues in online teaching to use innovative tools of technology. The group is open to anyone in any discipline or any workforce area. We have a number who are involved not only in academia, but also in the professional sector in learning and development. Anyone who essentially has a passion for providing guidance to our online educators in any particular area. We're going to focus on scholarship, conference presentations, such as we are doing now. We'll submit manuscripts for publications in peer-reviewed journals. We will develop professional webinars and podcasts. We're already doing that with about 10 different webinars and 12 podcasts that we have developed thus far. Those are going to be posted on the Golden website, which I will provide the address for in a moment. Uh, asynchronous micro learning experiences. So anyone can log in and be able to have learning on demand at their convenience. We will also provide a massive open online experience or MOOC so that anyone on a global basis can log in, be able to learn about online teaching and learning in various areas of expertise and discipline. And finally, the eventual publishing of an evolving uh, ebook, which will be a work in progress and can be edited literally on the fly to update it uh, very quickly. Golden is based on a number of pillars, including collegiality, respectfulness, uh, having a positive and supporting culture. Servant leadership is very important to us. Our executive board members are leading uh, the advisory board members as well as our directorate managers in the process of developing our products and services for each one of the areas of expertise. We've designed it as a safe environment for everyone who participates. It is focusing and is um, centered around a celebration of diversity and equity for all. 
We have a sharing, caring attitude, and it is designed to be an innovative think tank for experts to come in to the community of practice and be able to have the learning laboratory experience where it's okay to be wrong about something and it's okay to experiment. Uh, the uh, hurdles are very few and far between. So we've designed it specifically so that educators can innovate and be able to work outside the box. Uh, as I mentioned, equity is one of the most critical aspects as being in a learning laboratory as part of our community of practice. Our board drives our decisions collectively and makes our recommendations. It is not about individuals. It is about the entire community together. As I mentioned, we're open. We're welcoming to anyone who has a passion for learning. We empower our board members to be able to provide for their expertise and experiences. Again, we'll act as a think tank, focusing on cutting edge, innovative ways of being able to provide culturally responsive online learning experience, ultimately for students. So while we are working in terms of professional development for educators, ultimately the students of those educators are the ones who will benefit. We'll work on grants, partnerships, of which we're already doing, sponsorships with organizations. Those are all part of our longer term plans. I might add also that for anyone becoming a member of Golden, that your time commitment is completely flexible. It is entirely up to a member as to how much they can participate and contribute to our effort. It, if it can be made to the effort of educating online educators globally, then we would welcome you to be able to participate in this endeavor. These are some URLs and how to join. And again, you can download this slide deck at tinyurl.com slash Schultz Demers. And you'll be able to see all of the uh, sign up URLs requesting <clears throat> further information and our website at goldenonline.org. At this time, I'll pass it along to Dr. Demers. Thank you. Uh, as part of this group, uh, I'm the uh, coordinator of the Innovation Subdirectorate. And some of the things that we have done to innovate, if you will, include things like virtual worlds, structural gamification, and the use of artificial intelligence. Next slide. Uh, for virtual worlds, there's plenty of research that has been done in geography education inside a virtual world called Second Life. I refer you to a number of uh, my own research publications. Also, quest-based learning is a, a topic that I've covered extensively and have written on as well. What I'm going to talk about today, next slide is enhancing student interaction using a thing called Hackback Artificial Intelligence Tools. It's an online world uh, regional geography example that I did some years ago. Next. The problem with teaching a world regional geography class with 80 students uh, in an online environment is that you have all of these people trying to do discussion channels and it's really hard to do anything that involves grading and interacting with the students, which of course is a critical component of learning. Next. So the artificial intelligence in environment inside uh, this toolkit involves uh, three basic units, if you will. The moderation piece, where it uses natural language processing. It examines closed endedness and it looks basically at how sentences are structured and computer assisted human human moderation so it interacts with with the professor. In other words, it's using artificial intelligence to help the professor interact with the students uh, in a much more meaningful way and much more frequently next. The basic mechanics are very simple, perfect. Um, the first thing that we look at is a thing called the curiosity score. This is all automated. So the artificial intelligence tool does this. 
So in my, on, uh, my World Regional Geography course, it did things, they look at the presence of a question description or uh, response summary. It look, talks about the word count, looks at the word count, how many words are involved in the question, presence of cited sources, formatting and inclusion of resources, and behavioral data. Now, don't, don't advance yet, but one of the things to keep in mind is this tool is a little bit different in terms of the discussion channel because you don't ask the question, you simply provide the scenario. The students actually ask the question. So the question that they ask has to be open-ended so that others can then respond to it. Next. Okay, so the community health algorithm is also computer assisted, but it also involves the use of human interaction. So it looks at whether or not the post is close-ended if it's close-ended, it does not promote discussion. And so that is a negative. Uh, does the post contain profanity or harmful language? Does the post display low effect or lack of detail? Or low effort, rather, or lack of detail? Next. So the student first interacts with the artificial intelligence unit. Next. So it, right, you do some writing. Next. And then the artificial intelligence thing reviews it. Next. Then there's some coaching, usually done with the, uh, not just the artificial intelligence, but also with the faculty member. Next. And then you revise and continue. Today, this actually, when I did this, this was done uh, asynchronously. Right now, it's done in real time. Eskiden bu asenkron olarak yapılıyordu ama şimdi gerçek e, zamanda. So all of these suggestions come together to help the student learn how to do a better job. Next. And you can also post the best of the best and we, as you would in, in a, a kind of a gamification environment. Okay. Next, next slide. So some of the course insights. I did this thing and I was a little concerned because I've never done this before. Uh, I was concerned about having 80 students and it turns out that I had what we call 97% participation. So what that means is that the report provided a window into the health of our discussion community plus key insights. It looked at the participation rate, curiosity score averages, uh, fastest improving students, uh, most frequent, uh, cite, most frequently cited sources, et cetera, et cetera. So this thing is doing all kinds of things that an instructor would normally do, but literally wouldn't have the time to do in real time. Next. The average uh, curiosity score uh, was it said 58. So last week, 98 was a curiosity score. So you can tell whether or not the thing is dropping or, or rising, which helps you moderate your course. Next. Uh, it also analyzes the students with the fastest growth rate, uh, participation rate for data range, and the average post quality for the data range, uh, top cited sources, so it is analyzing all kinds of data that an instructor literally wouldn't have time to do. Next. The community stats. Now this is rather interesting. The average curiosity score in my Geography 112 course ended at 74.2. The national average was 50. And I thought this was really spectacular. Uh, one of the questions when I asked, for example, was, if you are the advisor to the new ambassador to, uh, let's say, Lithuania, uh, but the uh, ambassador's never been to Lithuania, what's the one question that the ambassador should know or be able to answer uh, if he's going to take over? So the student actually has to know something about Lithuania before they can even ask the question. So they're learning on their own deciding their own question, their own, uh, taking ownership of their own information 
and then providing it to the other students to interact with them. Next. Community health. Uh, so the students sparked each other. This is where they, they basically say, hey, you've done a really good job. Uh, rather than just saying that, they actually have to go in and interact with each other and like each other's posts and what have you. Next. Most cited sources, 80% of all posts in the community cited a source. So this gets the students interacting with the literature, which is really in, in, uh, a, a useful technique in this particular case. Next. Okay. Um, student interactions. Just here was one of the questions that was asked. If granted independence, would Bougainville prosper on its own? And the length of the answers, if you see on the right-hand side, was much better than what you usually get in a discussion channel, which is one or two lines. And I thought that was really useful as well. Next. It also allows you to pick the top post each week. Uh, here's an interesting one. How do Americans view their own democracy and values uh, and the values of their country? And so again, the question was posted by the student. And again, you can see that it's a fairly substantial uh, answer in the back. Uh, here's another one. What, what has made Venezuela unsafe for US ambassadors? And again, this is not a question that I posed to the student. They posed this, the question themselves, which required them to do a deep dive into the literature on the subject. Next. So the student uh, reactions overall to this approach were excellent. Uh, I don't make that up, it's a cute little graphic, but in fact, the responses I got from the students at the end of the semester were really quite amazing. Next. Here are the conclusions from this particular experience. The good is the curiosity scores. The students are actually, the curiosity scores went up rather rapidly at first and then stabilized at a pretty high level. Community health, they had plenty of likes and plenty of sparks, lots of curiosity, lots of post quality. Uh, basically, the post quality was considerably better than what I've seen in any discussion uh, questions I've ever posted before. And the lots of student interactions. In fact, uh, most of the time, the students who are required to interact with two other students, in most cases, each one interacted with at least four or five afterwards because the topic seemed to be of interest to them. The bad news is there were some navigation problems with this tool. Um, they're still working, the company's still working on this, Packpack's still working on this. Uh, some students actually won in my particular case out of 80, which isn't too bad, objected to paying $10 a semester for the use of this, what he considered just another, uh, another discussion channel or discussion tool. And then the lack of the integration with the LMS, that has been corrected since I have made this presentation. They've actually integrated directly with the learning management system. Next. And again, a reminder, this is just an example that we uh, used in one of our subdirectorates. Here's how you sign up for Golden. And I am committed to this, this information. So please, if this is something you're interested in, I would consider joining Golden. And I'm going to check out the, uh, see if I've got here some, some Q and A. Oh, I don't see any right here, but thank you very much. And I enjoyed being here. And I hope that this has proven useful. Please feel free to contact me if you wish, or, or Rich. <laughs>